Louisiana has been blessed with two and a half million acres of marshland and multiple estuaries feeding this marshland. This combination of natural features creates an ideal habitat for the spotted sea trout and it's arguably the most prized species among inshore anglers in Louisiana. In the old days, the size of the trout catch was measured by the number of coolers filled. Sadly, those days are gone, but even a decade ago, it was common to catch the 25 fish per day per angler limit, and with some of the 25 over three pounds in weight. But is the sea trout fishery still strong in 2019? Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries believes that it's rapidly declining. And so it's important for us as anglers to understand why they believe it's in decline. So this is the start of section two of a discussion of the 2019 trout assessment report. So now we, we've looked at the data, so we know what it's saying. Let's talk about how the data was gathered. And, and this is maybe where some of the controversy will arise because some people will probably feel like it doesn't represent the actual situation, uh, that there are more fish out there than uh, was recorded. And to be fair, newsflash, Louisiana Wildlife and Fishery did not go out and count every female trout in the estuary. Yeah, not possible. So uh, we can't start at that point with that assumption. We, we need to recognize that you have to use modeling, then you can extrapolate to the larger population and get an idea of what the total stock numbers are. All right, let's first talk about where the sampling is done and uh, what it is. So, I mean, if, so just to take a step back, I guess if we break this into two pieces, we're going to talk about the sampling, which is the determination uh, of how many females are out there and, and the ages of them. And that is the stock spawning biomass numbers that, that are very critical here that determines whether there's over an overfish situation. And then the second part of it is the fishing mortality. And, and that of course determines whether it's being overfished, whether there's overfishing going on. And so uh, that is a different means by which those numbers are collected. So, so okay, so let's go back and first talk about the sampling to determine how many females of spawning age are actually out there. So first of all, if you go to page six in the report, you'll see that they tell us where the sampling occurs. So uh, there's four locations, Pontchartrain Basin, Barataria Basin, Terrebonne Basin, uh, Chafalaya Basin, and then Calcasieu Sabine Basin. And the way the sampling is done is with marine gill net. So it's a marine gill net survey. Uh, the survey gear is a 750 foot monofilament gill net comprised, comprised of 550 foot panels of one inch, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarter, and two inch bar meshes. Uh, but they do go on to say that they, t they didn't use the data from the 1.75 and two inch sizes because there wasn't enough of it so they took that out so they're really just looking at the other three sizes uh, and then so of the ones that were collected of the fish that were collected uh, they they of course counted them all and then uh, a maximum of 30 randomly selected fish per mesh panel are collected for length measurements gender determination 
uh, and maturity information. So that that gives them uh, the 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 background to to define that SSB spawning stock spawning biomass number, which is really critical to determine whether or not it's overfished. So if we go to the second part, which is the fishing mortality side, how did they come up with those numbers? So uh, they did that with the two, two sources. One is the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Recreational Creel Survey, which is 2014 to 2018. And then they also have this historical, uh, this is marine, uh, marine recreational information program. So it collects data uh, about fish that are being caught. So this is from 20, 1982 to uh, 2013. And, and so they're using, and that's using a hindcast model to determine uh, how many fish are being caught. So here is part of the controversy that I've seen in social media and, and a lot of emotional responses surrounding this area. Uh, really, how many fish are being caught is one of the big issues, and thus how many fish are out there, right? So, because but fishermen are catching fish, and that's the means by which they are um, identifying or, or having opinion about how many fish are out there. All right, so. This is the way I see this. Uh, now, I have participated in, in many of these you know, dockside uh, uh, surveys done by wildlife fisheries under the Recreational Creel Survey. And, and of course, this is just since 2014. And they, they ask you some questions. They ask how many fish you caught, how many undersized, is trout specifically and, and, and other things, but you know, we're talking about trout here. So they, they ask you those questions. They don't measure anything. Once in a while they will take, they'll ask to, to take one of your fish, uh, extract the otolith, and then uh, do determine an age, uh, and then they do a, a gender termination as well uh, on the fish. So once in a while they will ask to do that, and I've had that done a number of times on fish that I've caught. But I've only seen this happening at marinas. Um, I'm my assumption is that for people that are not using the marina, so fishermen that have camps, uh, they've got their boats uh, just hanging there at the camp at their dock. They don't use the marina. I I'm guessing that they don't participate in these in the survey to a large degree so let's just follow that along uh, the people that have camps you can make an assumption that they may catch more fish than the people at the marina on average because they're in a position to fish more so they know where the fish are and so they're probably doing more fishing than the guy at the marina, the average guy at the marina. Because, you know, the average guy at the marina, you know, some of those people only fish a couple times a year. And so they're probably going to catch less fish than the guys at the camps. So if anything, this L.A. Creel survey would probably underestimate the number of catches. That's that's just a thought. Um, as well, there is this thing uh, where people catch more than their limits. And, uh, you know, where somebody catches a limit in the morning, they come in, have lunch, they go out and catch another limit. Now, uh, they actually address that in this report. They say that they expect that's only three percent where you have an illegal catch because there's more than the creel limit uh, and and so they they assume that's only three percent of the fish that are caught and they actually say that they don't it, the the it's it's infrequent enough that they don't include it in this study so therefore 
you know, when I read through this, I think that probably the number of fish that are being caught is likely to be under measured and not over measured. Okay, so let's take a, a little a, a look at how they uh, can use the their the sampling that they do, which is the gill net sampling of females to determine um, how many females are needed to keep the stock uh, in good, healthy condition. And so if we look at page nine, you'll see that they talk a little bit about this, uh, the fecundity and maturity values. So, so fecundity is just the uh, probability or the potential for a female trout to spawn and you know to produce its eggs and the maturity is of course how old they are and so there's a sort of uh, we, we already know that there's a relationship between how old a fish is and how many eggs it produces so that's why these two um, metrics are together in the same discussion now you also see in the report stated right here that the, the batch fecundity and spawning frequency are currently not available for the Louisiana stock. So, uh, you know, so that's important because if you see above here to realistically estimate annual fecundity and number of eggs spawned per batch and the number of batches spawned per season, you, you have to know, you have to have uh, an idea of how many eggs are produced by any particular fish at a certain age. So, the, and ideally, that's known, but it's not available to us here. So what they have to do is they take a, basically the number of female spawning stock. And, and that is used as a proxy for total egg production in this assessment. So that means there's probably some room for uh, uncertainty in that regard because we don't know if every two pound trout produces the same number of eggs. Uh, the age of the fish is, is one metric that you often see listed for instance a, a fish of a certain age will produce so many eggs as an as an estimate and but we don't know you know they're saying that they don't have that data they don't know for sure so they have to make some assumptions about that so before i close out this section i just point out one of the things and there's a lot of interesting points in this in the report but i'm not going to cover everything uh, that would take a very long time. So, uh, but it, it, it's a little interesting um, what they talk about discarded, uh, uh, the, the section on discarded mortality, uh, which is something that, uh, you know, I think about uh, if I release a fish, how long does it survive? So on page 10 is the discussion of that. And their conclusions is that uh, the discard the discard mortality is is assumed constant in this assessment at 10%. So this ratio is consistent with the overall rod and reel release mortality rates from the previously mentioned studies, which were 5, 11, 10, and 14% respectively. So for modeling purposes, stock losses to discarded mortality. Mortalities are incorporated directly into the recreational landing estimates. So that's what the, the wildlife and fisheries uh, a, uh, researcher will ask you how many juveniles or how many you released, how many undersized trout you released, and then they, they make an assumption uh, that only 10% of those actually die. So that's an important um, point of thinking in my mind because I've, I've, I've often wondered about how that affects fishing mortality, but that's how they're dealing with it in this assessment. Stay tuned for part three, where we will discuss how the limits and targets were set, how various metrics such as maturity is determined, and a way to think about egg production.